Hi and welcome to another episode of Wine and Wisdom. I'm Thomas Le Huang and you're listening to the TO podcast where knowledge is shared and no one takes himself too seriously. All right, what, what an interesting week. What an interesting um great sub and you want to introduce it, man? We're going to do the wines first. We're going to talk first. We're going to we're going to talk about the new Bitcoin that's out, Omnicrom, I think they call it, the, <laughs> the new uh, cryptocurrency. That's... <laughs> what kind of name is that for a virus? Omnicron. Is that the name of the computer chip that they put in us when we got vaccinated? I thought it was, thought it was a new transformer. That's the that's the name of the microchip they put on us when we got vaccinated. The... <laughs> Omnicron. <laughs> and um, what's his face come out today? Scotty, Scotty too hotty and said that we're not going to close any borders. That's because we're on six cases. But isn't it funny that now all of a sudden it doesn't matter how many cases and how many people die. We don't do anything about it now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you're closer to an one, election. Please. You know why? You're getting a lot closer to the election. Yeah. Yeah. What else have you guys been doing this week? Well, we went to uh, Stephen Thompson and Lisa Lisa Thompson now's wedding up in um, Barambi. Thanks for the invite, Tomo. Legend. <laughs> Good on you, brother. I have yeah. to say, though, it was a beautiful wedding. It was very, there was 57 people, including the bride and groom. So it was a very small uh, group of um, their friends and family, I suppose. And um, it was so lovely. I'm so thankful the rain stopped for them because, from what I heard, it's been pouring down there for weeks um but yeah it was lovely both looked lovely and it was beautiful i stepped outside today and there was this strange orange thing in the sky and after five minutes was, my skin started peeling off I'm like, what is I know. this same up here i just felt like crazy? starting a fire and getting warm in winter you know it was a- yeah i know well, we are the second day of summer and for a while there i didn't think we were getting one so that's good what uh, else? Let's start with our wine. Let's start with our wine. Uh, Louis. Yeah, you've talked else? a big game. Come I on. Have, I have talked a big game. I've stepped it up this week since I copped a bit of flack from you guys last week. Guidance. It was so, guidance, Louise. Guidance. Guidance. Was it parental guidance or was it <laughs> um, no. this week? And you have to bear with me because I'm still uh, uh, pr- pronouncing it. I'm still learning. But Thank can you guys you. see? Sorry. Pronounce it for me, Chris. Is it Keenetan or Keenetan? Keaton something along with it. Just go back to the last podcast we had it on, see how we pronounced it then. <laughs> um, Keenetan uh, euphonium, I believe is what it is. So it's a 2012. <laughs> is that how I say it? Ken, how do I say it? You phone in. That's not oh, a bloody hotline, euphonium. mate. Euphonium. So anyway, listen, it combines the old vine Shiraz, Cab Sav, Merlot and Cab Franc in regional Barossa blends, showing rich, dark fruit, complex Each structure. Each is always a good drop. Beautiful. I, yeah. And look, I was walking around in the shop for a while and this young, young, lovely fellow came up who seemed to know a lot about wines. And he said, what are you doing? And I said, I need a good wine. I need it to rate really well. And here's what I'm doing. And he said, if it was me, I'd get that. So I said, well, that'll do me. So... Easily led. Easily <laughs> led. Danola, last well, week's winner, defending champion. Well, it, I think you're going to be hard-pressed to beat this week. So I bought a bottle of Molly Duca. It's called uh, Carnival Row Love. Um, it's a 2016 Shiraz from the Clare Valley. Uh, you jump on our website because it's a very, very unique website. As you can see, the label there is quite unique as well. Mm. Um yeah, it looks like she it came out of a HP. Pre- <laughs> HP printer. She's got two premium wines, the Syrah and the Cap Save. Uh, so the Shiraz and the Cap Save. Um, I stumbled across it in Vans and uh, I want big things from it. Actually, I, I went to the website and the website's really sort of left a field of what you would normally find in um, wineries. Uh, the lady who owns the winery is the chief winemaker. Both the kids work in there. She's got some other workers in there as well. Uh, I'd like to actually visit the uh, winery itself because they talk it up a little bit and if they say they're a little bit different. So 
I think it's going to be good. One thing I do want to ask you guys is on their website, they've got something they call um, uh, shake, shake it, right? Because they're talking about the nitrogen they put into the wine to store the wine. So when they make the wine, they put nitrogen into it. And they, she says, if you look at it under a microscope, it sort of flattens out the taste particles. When you shake it, you get rid of that nitrogen out of the bottle. So when you pour it, you know, you get those bubbles on top of your wine. That's yeah. apparently the nitrogen releasing. So they actually say to you, open it, pour a bit out, shake the hell out of it until you get the bubbles, open it, you let that escape, then do it again, and the taste the taste grows in the wine. I don't know. Listen, that's on the website, man. So Sounds like you've had plenty of practice to me, oh, mate. Oh, here so. we go. Oh. Already with the underhanded tactics. It's like you just anyway, made that. Hey? Say that again, mate. Just had a fizzy drink. That's a very, very young wine. You have to get rid of the fizzy. <laughs> Thomas Lohuang. How much is that bottle then? 90. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. All right. All right. Thomas. Okay. Mine is eight at the gate. <gasps> all right. And it's uh, 2016 Cabernet Shiraz from uh, Rotten Bully. And um, you can get it. For I think something like uh, thirty something dollars. I can tell you because I bought two yesterday for next week. So now I'm going to have to trick me. <laughs> Shit. Thirty dollars. I think that's not in the spirit of the budget. It well, rates. That's in, that's in the spirit of the point. All right. It's not going to matter. Oh, here we go. Single file. Single fill. Single file. No, I think Lil's got this one right. Lou. Before. Hey. You had it before. This one has made an appearance before, but it was in a non-competition week, and it was a couple of months ago. Oh, we weren't competing. No. Uh, no. Sorry. We weren't, uh, we competing. weren't competing with my wine. We weren't competing with my wine, which Lose, I used the following week. Loses, no, wine. that's two weeks in a row, Chris. So that's bullshit, right? Oh, so, so there's a time, there's a length of time that we can't use it, is there? Mate, we, it was a non-competition week. No, we can't. Can you gave yeah, yours as a gift. Yours was a gift. And this was months ago. Week. And I knew there'd only be one person who'd possibly remember it, and I knew it would be probably TL because you both blew up at me for not buying you a bottle of it. This is so, a two, this is the Vivian Chardonnay from Denmark. It's a 2012. Mm. And there was a week where we weren't competing, and I, I think I said we've got this all wrong. I'm making my protest, all right, very, very loud. No. Right. This is almost a Chris Dinola kind of thingy. No, it's not. Mate, I, scroll back, I scroll back. I scroll back to when I. Jeff comes on. We need to throw it over the Jeff. You know what I actually had to do? I went to send Charlotte the photo, and I couldn't send it to her. I do. I scroll back, and I'm like, "When was this?" And it was. It was a while ago. It was nearly eight weeks ago that we had this wine on, right? So I took a new photo and went to send it, but had to stop because after the last podcast, I actually rated it because it was a bloody good wine, and it says. Whatever the score is, I won't. I won't ruin the score. It said whatever the score was. It hadn't changed since last time. But underneath it, it said you rated it a five. And I'm like, I'm not starting this shit again. So, uh, that's a double right. butt whammy. I had to go back to the old photo where I hadn't voted on it yet, and that was about two months ago. So yeah. the score has score well, hasn't changed. Well, we can't have two same bottles, Louise, and as long if unless it is a different a different what different vintage. Okay. Yeah, because different years, very different weather, very oh, different. This is a different year. The last one was a first quarter of 2012, and this is after yeah. financial year. So sure, but I'm, I'm waiting for the scoring, and then uh, we, we will know for my... Um, I'll win. For my thingy whether it... it... Well, you, you've got to be lucky on this this time, Cam. I'll tell you, this rates pretty well. All right. Okay. So yeah. what's the news? Yeah, so you started with Omicron. Well, Omicron is Omicron. We will see. I don't think there's uh, there's much they can do. China. Did anyone follow what's China, Taiwan and China? No. Why? Okay, don't, well, worry. don't worry about that. Then we can't talk about that. They're going to be a war soon, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Always been, mate, South China Sea, there's always been bloody... Uh... No, they sent more planes over this week and the, the um, message was anyone who tries to stop us will destroy them all. 
coming out of the State Department. And that was on their state-run media. And they've gone into a part of Taiwan airspace that they've never gone into before. So, so that's the Chinese saying this. That's the Chinese doing it. They flew some jet fighters and a refueling plane. And um, and then a, a day later, articles started coming out about the US's new presence in Australia and what they're uh, bringing into our country to stop that from happening. So it's... Mm. Oh, well, if there's, if there's one, then we'll deal with that then. But for the moment, there's nothing to deal with. Um, but um, looking at the comments that we got for this week's uh, topic. Uh, a little fire. We, we, could, we, we, we might have created a war on, on our wine and wisdom this week. Good. Uh, but there, there, there was some really good uh, comeback, though. There, there was some really great comeback. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's try the wine first. Cheers, <laughs> losers. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, guys. This is what this competition has. 40 degrees today. You're all drinking web, red wine just to try and get a win. Yeah, but mine's been in the fridge. Mm, it's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful is not going to up your points. You understand that, right? It's not going to make it. <laughs> how, how, how was it, Chris? Hey, that's good. Is it? Very good. I was a little concerned when I seen your face, the first little... Very good. No, that's good. Oh, yeah? Still giving. Beautiful. That's full body. Wow. I'm getting aromas of Tui's new and... Um, <laughs> <laughs> a mixed and palette. It's almost and... a beer slash wine palette. Mm. What does defeat smell like, Ken? Hey. Tastes, <laughs> like, tastes like winner's piss. That's what it tastes like. <laughs> All right. So let's let's start. You raised that uh, subject last week, Ken. So after the podcast last week, we were having a chat, as we usually do, and talking about each other's days, and I got a bit fired up because uh, we'd been dealing with some shit at home to do with one of our children, and uh, we decided it was going to make a great topic for this week, and judging by the response on Facebook and the war that has erupted, uh, we've we've touched a nerve. Um, I have a 10 year old son for the last few weeks because they've only been at school for a few weeks we've been getting calls from the school and letters from the school and notifications from the school and meetings with the school because the 10 year old's been playing up a little bit um, which not a problem some of it's been warranted you know you hit a kid that's warranted you did break his head because uh, if you hey? go did he break his hand? Because if he broke a hand, hitting a kid like it was said on Facebook, then that's another problem. No. All no. right. He didn't break any bones. Someone picked on him. He hit him. He got in trouble for it. Not a problem. We got a phone call. But we also get a phone call when he laughs in class. And we also get a phone call when he doesn't like doing his mass work. And we also get a phone call because he gets distracted sometimes during English. And all this stuff's resulted in us and, well, Isaac first being told that he told before us being told that he needs to see the school counsellor because he might have a learning issue. Was and he told that by a teacher, Cam? He's been told that in front of us by teachers. Oh, no, he, hold on, hold on. He was told by a teacher first. Yes. It's been, not, not in front of you. No, but then it's been a group discussion as well. Yeah, that's where I was going. And that's well. then flowed on to Crystal and I getting told that, our child has a learning difficulty and that we need to send him to a specialist. And all the inferences were that even though they didn't want to say it is that he's got ADD and um, you're breaking up. You better repeat that. I said, there's a fair, fair emotional talk. So, let it ride. Um, it is what, where we end up. So, Ken, you're breaking up. Seriously, you know, you're going to have to upgrade your yeah. thing. You're breaking up. Can you just, re can you just repeat it? So, so after you've learned about all these things, you, you said it's been a bit emotional, yeah? I think we've lost him, mate. I think we've lost him. Mm. All right. While we wait, while we're waiting for him to come back. So, what do you guys think? Pretty bad from the teacher to to tell a kid. Oh, it's terrible. Like, 
I don't think anything, anything that a teacher wants to say to a student, I think needs to be said first to the parent um, before it's said even to the to a student at all. Um, if it's ever said in front of the student at all, you know, it's not, I think that's crossing a line of uh, their responsibilities. I mean, the, yes, they are the professional within the child's life, but the parent is the parent. And there's a fine line there as to what can be said. That's my opinion anyway. Well, uh, I think it's a disgrace for, for a teacher to do that to a child. Because... Absolutely. Mm. Can, you, um, can you guys hear me now or not? Yeah. yeah. Yes. You're still breaking up, but we can. Yeah. Let me try a different. So for for that for a teacher to sit a 10-year-old oh, down sorry. and tell that to a 10-year-old, the weight of that message to a 10-year-old who really can't digest it, you know, what it means is disgusting. That behavior, I think the teacher's the one that's in like needs to go to counseling. Seriously. Yeah. That is terrible. It's so something like that can change change the child's life. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, it's just. Oh. How are we doing in my back? You're back. All right. So the point of it is this, and I don't know if I cut out before. I have friends who are teachers. I had no plenty of people who are teachers and this, I'm going to go off and there's going to be stuff said and we might have to have a conversation about it later. That's fine. We can talk. But um I've let my boy down by listening to some of those fucking teachers and we took him to a specialist to sit there and hear that if a child does what he likes to do, but then doesn't do the stuff that he doesn't like to do, then he's got ADD and you need to medicate him. And if he gets angry sometimes, but he doesn't get angry other times, he's got ADD and you need to medicate him. And if, if um, he stubs his toe and he can't control his emotions, then he's got ADD. And I had to stop the appointment and stop listening and not talk to this doctor and take my kid out of there and go, what the fuck have I done to my child? Because it never should have got to that point. He never should have been put in that situation. All right. Yeah. We've lost two years of schooling because of unforeseen circumstances, which is no one's fault, not the teacher's fault, not the parent's fault. All right. But we, for the last two years, have been forced to play teacher. Forced to do something that we know nothing about. Does anyone here done a teaching degree? Thomas probably has because he's fucking done everything in the world. <laughs> close. He's close. <laughs> We've been back at school for three weeks and instead of showing empathy, empathy to these kids who have had their whole junior development turned upside down, yeah. been put in situations with people who have been put in situations that they've never been in before, instead of showing empathy to these kids... First, he got told he was threatening people's lives by turning up to school during lockdown by a fucking teacher. That was that was on the whole, right? That message was to a class, not just that was to, to him, a right? classroom full of kids, yeah. right? Yeah. So, regardless of whether it's one person or not, but instead of going right, oh, kids, you've been at home for two years, you've been homeschooled, which may not have been going very well or not. You're a little bit restless. Let's come up with a solution and let's deal with it. Instead, calls every day. Isaac farted in class. Isaac's got issues. Isaac's got issues. Isaac got issues. You're going to belittle a child, punish a child, and avoid any form of responsibility on your own back for a kid not paying attention in class by declaring it a, a behavioural issue. We've done a complete 180 of job descriptions, right? We're not teachers. Are we teachers? No. No, but you're not fucking parents, okay? Parents. Hey? Could be parents. They could be parents, but you're not my kid's parent, all right? Yeah. And you're not fucking Sam's parent. But and Ken, you're not they're also not a professional in the field of ADHD and medical and... No, that. your job is not to anoint yourself a parent, right, and to tell us because you can't do your fucking job and because you can't adjust to different personality types, the job's to teach, all right? And I'm sure teachers will be the first to admit that every child is different and every child learns differently. Is there any argument that every child learns differently? Not at all. So they've got 10 children that learn one way and we've got a couple of kids that learn a different way. So instead of adjusting to the couple of kids that learn a different way, we're going to throw them in a basket where they've got something fucking wrong with them because what that does is means I don't have to change my teaching style, I don't have to adjust, and I can tick all the boxes that I need to tick for the government when a complaint's made, they can come in and go, oh, we told him he had to get counselling and we sent him to the doctor and we did this and we did that. 
All right. Now, my son is not a fucking angel. All right. Because the first thing teachers are going to say is, oh, overprotective parent, nothing's wrong with his kid. All right. He's got me as a father for one. So he's guaranteed to have something wrong with him. Okay. He gets angry when shit doesn't go his own way. He doesn't like doing chores all the time. If he doesn't like doing something, he doesn't do it. But you know what the same kid does? The same kid has learned to play the last post on a trumpet. The same kid can sit there and watch a three-hour documentary if it's on something that interests him. The same kid, if you let him, would play Fortnite for a week without stopping. The same kid watches a movie with subtitles and can read the subtitles word for word as quickly as they come. But I've got teachers telling me he's got learning difficulties. Mm -hmm. Right? The issue is not that he doesn't know how to learn. The issue is that your fucking math lessons are boring. Right? He hasn't got an interest in them because you're shit at what you are doing. And instead of pointing a finger at a fucking 10 year old, mm. look at the three that are coming back at you and go, maybe there's something in the way we're teaching the kids that's letting them loose. Right? <clears throat> if you can't, and here's, I hear, I hear the complaint from teachers. Teachers, apparently it's hard to discipline a child at the moment. And the excuse these people are telling me is, oh, he might behave himself at home, but that's because you can discipline him and we can't discipline him. Fucking bullshit. Right? Because their form of discipline is, oh, we're going to give you a naughty sticker and we're going to give you another naughty sticker. And if you get three naughty stickers in a row, you get kicked out of the classroom. All right? They're not interested enough to look at a real problem. And because of that, they're not interested enough to come up with a real solution. Sending a child to the counselor, telling us to take him to a specialist, expecting to give him, they, they rang us and said, when are we going to get the report from the specialist? We said, you're not getting a report from the specialist. How about instead of punishing a kid, telling him he does, when he does something right, telling him he's done a good job. How about only calling us if he actually does something bad, like punch a kid or, disobey orders or the stuff that is society deems as not good enough, right? Stop covering your own ass. Stop trying to tick boxes that cover off if you're going to get sued and take some responsibility. Well, we spent, you know, Crystal and I, fuck, we beat ourselves up enough over all sorts of shit because that's the type of people we are. And when, you know, they sent home a bit of paper that we're supposed to take to this doctor and it said in 2000 and oh, he's improving, my boy, I'll give him that. In 2019, he had six incidents. In 2020, he had 12 incidents. And in the three weeks, apparently, that we've been at school this year, he's had 16 incidents. Incidents of what? Mm. Of being a 10-year-old boy. Yeah. A 10-year-old kid doesn't like doing something he doesn't want to do. A 10-year-old trying to adjust back to... This fucking doctor, maybe it's a separate topic, this doctor sat there and told us that probably Crystal and I had ADD because when we don't like doing something, we generally don't do it. <laughs> and the school says, oh, when are we going to get the report from the doctor? You're not going to get the fucking report from the doctor. You're going to do your job. You're only going to call us about serious shit, Right. And this is all last week. You know what I had to come home to last yesterday? That same 10-year-old kid had been bashed with a tree root by two kids. He's covered in fucking bruises. They didn't do anything about it. And now he's the outcast because two kids ripped tree roots out of the fucking ground and bashed him with it. He's the one who needs to go to a fucking counsellor. Stop pretending you're anything but someone who did a fucking exam in how to teach mathematics. If you're there for the kids, protect the fucking kids. Do something about your bullying policy and then probably half the behavioural issues would leave. Don't fucking come to me and tell me that he doesn't pay attention in maths at the same time as he's getting bashed by fucking tree roots from two older boys. That is a fucking problem. Mm. And that is not every fucking teacher I know. 
But I go down to the school and I grab those two boys. I say, you ever touch my kid again, you're dead. Where do I end up? Yeah. Mm. All my boy wanted to do today was turn up and play with those same kids because he wants to fit into that group. Mm. Right? But now the teachers are segregating him. He went to a different classroom. Mm. Don't give me parenting advice. Sort your own fucking shit out. Yeah. Discuss. Yeah. Fucking angry, mate. Yeah. It's, it's a bit difficult because the... Um... The, te the teachers these days are actually no longer just teachers. They also have to fill out a lot of forms. They, there's got a lot more on regulations and, <laughs> and following certain procedures and making sure they record stuff. Yeah. It's, it's very, very difficult for some of these teachers too, you know. Um, number two, it is true. Teachers can't even touch a kid. Teachers can't even say something derogative to a child and th there's so much these days that um that's putting handcuffs on, on on teachers it's difficult to ask them to really do their job now that the, the have you sat down with the teacher by by yourself without isaac because yes, i think we have mate. okay so uh does a teacher have children i haven't asked <laughs> well that probably be my first question because I, I got a lot of amazing parental advice back in my younger days from people who were single, you know, who actually changed all of their advice the day they, they had their own children. So I know the quality of those, those advice. So that's one. And uh, I think that, you know, I'm listening to you, Ken. I'm just thinking, first of all, did you involve your child in the discussion? And you did. And, and I think it's a mistake. I, I think that if 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 teachers ask you to go in and, and, and discuss some of these about these issues, your child should not be there. We didn't start the involvement, mate. I get so it. when he comes home and says, Oh, they want me to go and see somebody and ask why. I, I get it, but still, still that doesn't mean that you continue. You still have to put a break, that's one. And, and number two, I probably would have just given that teacher a, a real psychological beating. Because what he has done now, we can't undo. Mm. It's not easy to undo things like this. That that to me is the, the the worst thing, right? The the you know the bruising of of kids fighting. I mean that's that's part of the the, the game that kids. Yeah, but that do. is part of kids, mate. But so is not wanting to do your fucking schoolwork, and that doesn't make you a pariah. That doesn't no, make you. No, it doesn't. But the, here's the other thing I want to ask you. Are you still discussing that in front of him at home? No, mate, not at all. All right, that, that's that's where it should stop. All right, the rest it can change, uh, mate. In in about four or five days, it's finished. You you can't change though. This is a problem that I've been I've been thinking uh, about. You, we're asking teachers to just teach. Really, the, these guys they they spend the entire day with these kids. They, they, these kids sometimes react, don't react, don't, uh, are insulting because they come from different kind of upbringing. Mate, these teachers will have to behave uh, in a certain way. You know, we're we asking these teachers just to teach math, really. They, 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 they dare also to impart values, uh, to inspire kids to want to learn or maybe to grow. They, there's an exchange that happens between the teacher and, and the child too. Where's so the exchange that says everyone, parents included, no one's been at school. So we've been doing the teacher's job, right? And depending on depending on your school, right? I know, Thomas, your kids were on Zoom with their teacher all day. Isaac got five minutes a week. Mm. Right? And we were the teacher for the rest of the time. Mm. So where's the recognition of everyone coming together going, this has been shit for everybody, let's work through it. There is no way anyone yeah. has come back the way they left or come back at the level they should be. And I'm talking about children. Yeah, right? and that's very true. My son is a clown, right? He, he'll be a stand-up comic that he'll, that's his, he's an entertainer. That's what he wants to do, okay? And I know that'd be frustrating, but that doesn't make for the shit that's going on. And all they do, it's this, it's an exercise in this, okay? Rather than try and figure out how we can um, adjust and overcome, we're washing our hands and we wash our hands by the 
bureaucracy and the red tape that Thomas was talking about. We're just going to have a form for this and a form for that and a form for that and a procedure manual, and that's all we're going to do. All right. Maybe but the a- meantime, the meantime, he's only going to fall further behind, isn't he? Because now the damage he's done, he thinks he's got something wrong with him. Whether he says it to me or not, he hasn't. But how could you not? Uh, I think I think that maybe that the, the, we need to spend a bit of time in the kid and and uh, uh, remove that um, program. Mm. But definitely, uh, did you go to the principal and and bring? We've had we've had the discussions, mate. I went to the school today to make sure I was the one that was there when the bell ended because apparently the the three kids were after him again when he rocked up at school today. So I was the one there at half past two to make sure that. There was nothing going on. My wife has been handling the discussion since last week because I can't do it in a way that isn't going to get. So then, then you are reinforcing what the teacher is saying, which is you want to do what you don't want to. And as an adult. No, it's not what I don't want to. I'm going, what's better for the situation here? Me threatening to. No, there's no threat. You using your ability to sell. And sit down with people who are at different level. I asked them, I said, what's the, what's the chances this 10-year-old kid's having a lendia? I said, what do you mean? I said, well, this was before it went as far as it did. I said, last night he was reading subtitles off the TV screen, but you're sitting here telling me he's got, he can't read. I said, what's the chances the kid's got your con? Oh, no, no, we've, we've got years of experience and this and that. The kid had him conned. 100% got him conned. He was working out a way. Talk He's about sales. Absolutely. Hey, listen, Kev, I'm, I'm going to go on the other side because right now we, we, we sound like we one way, one way highway. No, no. He's got them con. He's got them con wrong because when you go to school, your job is not to con your teachers. You get it's. It means to me that either the upbringing that you have received is our, is about just con people, right? It, that, then it's wrong. So he needs to really learn some of the stuff. All I'm saying is that the teaching was wrong to go to child to do some stuff. But yeah. definitely uh, there, there's behaviours that Isaac's going to have to learn that you go to school, you, there is there's yeah. discipline, yeah. There, there are virtues that you're going to have to build, not destroy vices that you're going to make. They, they, they're going to serve you in society. You, we, we just have to have a look. At the 200 or plus comments that we have on Facebook on, on the subject, it started okay. I, I, I've read them all. It started okay, and then suddenly, when an adult's running out of uh, of option now, instead of discussing the the the, the, the subject, suddenly it became a an, an attack on a person. Is that how we should groom our kids? Is that how no. society should be? Because that's what we're doing. No, okay? not at all. When I don't... went to school. No. When I went to school, if you did something wrong, you got detention. If you didn't do your homework, you failed. My parents never got a fucking call to say I had a medical condition and I need to see counsellors and all this bullshit. Right? Maybe maybe these days they're getting a commission, mate. I don't know. You know what happened to me? And it's, uh, maybe it's born true. I got my, my teachers told my mum I was having trouble making friends, so they said, "Oh, you better send him to a." Um, psychologist because he's having trouble making friends you know what i thought for the next 10 years yeah yeah I, I didn't have any friends yeah. what? Still don't have friends i mean I'm... no i don't know that's what i'm saying maybe they're right or maybe i still don't have friends because i was fucking a school teacher decided that in year four i had trouble making friends mm. you know yeah. i think society has something to answer to for teachers because we've taken the power out of the teacher's hands a lot of the time. When I say power, the disciplinary power. I mean, when I was at school, and Thomas, you would have been the same. I don't know about you guys, because you're a little bit a little bit younger than us. Man, the strap, that had my name on it. Yeah. Seriously. Okay. And, and you know what? If I got home and my parents found out that I got in trouble, I got belted again. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think society's taken a lot of that discipline or that yeah. You know, if it's right or wrong, that's probably a conversation for another time. There's, you know, a show at the moment about different parenting styles and so forth. And that, that's probably another conversation. But a lot of that, a lot of society about participation wards and all this crap is tra- taught our kids to be entitled. 
Um, and Ken, your son has gone through something he shouldn't have gone through, mate. And there's no way a teacher is right in speaking to a child about how they are without you present to start with. But totally wrong, mate. We know you and Crystal, great parents. But at the end of the day, we've got to look at both sides of the coin. The teachers now, as Thomas said before, man, they've got to fill out so much more paperwork. They're often at work earlier, a lot earlier than they were, working a lot later, marketing exams. They're not paid very well for it. Mm. Um, I mean, they do get good holidays. They do get good holidays in the sort of um, the scheme of things. How much are they paid as they left, as they leave school, these teachers? As, as if a, a, a young teacher, as he starts his career, how much is he paid or she paid? I think starting salary is around about the 60 mark. I was going no, to say. 70,000, more than a young lawyer, more than a psychologist who's starting, more than some other people, all right? I don't think we can go down the route and of overwork. Uh, overwork. We can't go down the route of overworked and underpaid. Because oh, look, I, I was going to get to the fa this fact. This is the point I was trying to make. Is you got a choice, the, right? The, you have right, and you know what? Uh, I, I look at teaching a lot like nursing. It's a both of them a shit job. Seriously, you've got to have a passion. You've got to want to do them. It's a career. Right? It's, um... it's, it, it's a career, right? But. It, it's something you've got to have a passion for the children. You've got to have a passion for teaching. And uh, is the fact that the class sizes are increasing. I mean, we took our son out of his last school because they had seven year seven classes and there was 32 students in each one of those classes. And mm -hmm. he was just floating through the middle of the class when I know he could have done a lot more. So uh, some of those students, uh, sorry, the students, some of the teachers have been, I think there's demands on them that unfortunately People like Isaac get dealt with a certain way because they don't have the time. Yeah. I don't know, or they don't have the drive or passion and, to do it. And they're, and they're also scared too, because I think like a lot of industries, people are scared. They're, they're scared to make a move and do the wrong thing and get sued or, you know, it, it, crossing the line. And it's, it is a very fine line. And no, because of that, we're going to psychologically damage no, children, right? No, no that's, what's that's, the, that's wrong, Wait, Ken. That's right, what's right. happening. I totally agree. So, and so I the question is, the question was, the reason Facebook went off, all we did was post should teachers give parenting advice and Facebook went off. Yeah. Right? Because so, a lot of parents can, in your situation, Cam. We can talk about are they overworked and underpaid and all that stuff and class sizes, but let's get back to the, the question. Yes. Should they be telling parents how to raise their child? Yes or no? In a nutshell, no. I don't think that anybody should tell you how to raise your own children because everybody's got their own different ways and values and everybody's different. But you got to look at the role of a teacher and what their duty is. And when you look at it like this, children spend eight, day, eight hours a day at school, eight hours a day in bed and eight hours a day at home. So they're basically spending a third of their lives until they're 18 or almost 18 in the care of a teacher. Now, I had no idea and knew nothing about um, the law i don't know whether it's a law but i'm sure it is in regards to the in loco parentis law does anybody know about it hear about it know anything about it? basically what it says is and and i have to read it because i'm not you know i can't retain everything but it basically is um in loco parentis was used to describe the nature of the relationship between a teacher and a student and the source of the teacher's authority it was particularly used in the context of assessing the nature of the duty of care owed by a teacher to students. And one of the classic cases in the 19th century said that the duty of a schoolmaster was to take such care of his boys as a careful father would take of his boys. And so when it says is um, pretty much once a, once a teacher, or sorry, once a, um, when children are dropped at the school gates, the law says teachers must assume the role of replacement parents. Um, you know, like under the Children Act 1989, teachers have a duty of care towards their pupils, traditionally referred to as in loco parentis. Legally, while not bound by parental responsibility, teachers must behave as any responsible parent would do in promoting the welfare and safety of children in their care. So, so where in there does it say, Dot? Pardon? Where in there does it say if child doesn't like algebra, make a diagnosis of ADD and doesn't, yeah, doesn't say that but no. what it says is that, that the that teacher does it have, does it... The, the teacher must resume the role of a, a of a decent parenting in looking out for the children's welfare safety and all of that so yes 
I 100% agree that teacher should never have said that to your son ever because you know as a parent you probably wouldn't even say that yourself to your son until you really had investigated further yourself so yes that's wrong I totally agree but the teachers in some way resume the role of a parent for that period of time and should take better care and why they did that to Isaac I don't know and I don't agree with it but yeah. Let's forget, let's forget Isaac for the moment, because I think I think that we, we, we are too much around that thing where we now know the teacher's done something wrong. Okay. Now the the child is uh, is our children are told at school about things like uh, I, I just got a note from uh, from the school that the girls are going to go into year nine and they've been told you're going to go into maths 5.3, you you're going to go into 5.2, and you're going to go in for 5.1. Okay. So Forget that that it's about the disease, but isn't it the same thing that the teacher is doing, telling a kid, you're really not good for maths, therefore you're going to have to go in weak maths. And now the, the kid's got that stigma for the rest of his life. Mm, yeah. So isn't, it, so isn't it the same thing? So that's, what, a problem with the, that's a problem with the curriculum, not someone, not, the, not teachers self-anointing themselves as... Um, Parental advisors, right? No, that's I'm saying that's a problem with the curriculum. No, 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 it's not because the teacher is still the person who's passing on that belief to the kid that he is not deserving of high level of math. Well, the curriculum says you got to grade people, right? That it, and that's why I think it is. I mentioned the Swiss last week. I think it's Sweden who's got it right. It doesn't grade the kids. Okay, there's no one, and they actually they actually instead of segregating because their philosophy is that. If you put all the smart kids in a room, smart kids, all the 5.5s in a room and all the fives in a separate room, the gulf only widens, doesn't get any closer together. So they make sure they have a mixture of ability yeah. in every class so that that we know the benefits of association by hanging around people who are better at something, you'll hopefully get better at it. Our Australian curriculum says you have to grade the kids and you have to rate the kids. So... They're, and it's the teacher who does that, yes, but they're the um, they're the talking point for the the curriculum they're given, I suppose. I'd what I'm saying is that let's not be naive. Our kids are being told the same thing, not ADHD, but they told the same thing about every subject they do it, right? Yeah. As they get towards year 11, they've been told already, you're not good for this. Uh, if I were you, I'd look for jobs in this kind of department. You're not really going to. They, they already been pigeonholed all the way. And we don't know. Guys, let's be talking as if, like, you know, uh, the ADHD is the one thing. I, I think the ADHD, it's, it, it's not for the teachers to say, but it's not for the teachers to say to the kid. But let's have a look at this question in bigger thing. Should teachers really be guiding some of the kids. i give you an example. Charlotte was talking to me about it. Charlotte, who's my eldest daughter and, and who's finished her studies many years ago. She said, Dad, you remember that they when at the beginning of the year, I was, I think, E grade or F grade in math. And you sat down with me and you took me from that level to, to the uh, A level straight away in less than one year. Yeah. But what if a, a teacher took her and said, you're just an E grade kid? Mm. And there was nothing to be done. And I think that that's, that's one thing. Now, as a parent, I didn't sit down and I didn't jump up and down and tell the, kid, the, the teacher, you should not classify my kid. No, no, no. I went, let's prove them wrong. Let's sit down and do this stuff here so that at the end of this year, they can actually eat their words. And I think that that's maybe also responsibility for parents to take. I'm Is surprised it? you didn't put her on bread and rations, mate. An E student in your house. Come on, man. No, it happens, mate. Listen, I have E student, I have F everything, man. There's no problem. But in the end, it's I the, the twins, for example, have now both been admitted into high maths in their class. And I said to them, I don't care. Have you done your best? If you've done your best, I can't ask for more because that is the only virtue you need to develop in life. School, uh, Albert Einstein said, education is what you remember long after you left school. So it, it School is not going to teach you anything, but maybe the people's skill, uh, maybe some of the basic on how to think. So I think that school does all of that stuff. Yeah. So, so you're going to have to take advantage of what you have there and make the best of it. 
Mm. So literacy and um, numeracy skills and rates have been declining in this country for quite a while, right? And that's, there's plenty of stats to prove it. Um, that's why they had to introduce NAPLAN to start rating schools to tell schools they weren't good enough. So you're going down and, and we, we, you know, we've got to have the three fingers pointing back at us. You're going down the parents' route, Thomas. So is it the parents' fault? It's all us parents. We're all parents here, yeah? Yep. So it's our fault, the numeracy and literacy skills of uh, um, failing in the country. I've got, I've got kids. I, I didn't, we didn't say that, but what are you talking about now? Now you're talking about the... the, the no, but I'm saying it was, was, you're saying it's a, no matter where the kid's at. It's not our fault. I think the discussion of whose fault it is is wrong. I think a lot of the... Uh, what I was sort of getting to, I should have clarified, a lot of the Facebook comments say, well, if they, they need to focus on teaching people how to read, write and count because they can't even do that right. So what are they doing? Teach, telling people how to parent, right? So... And there's, I don't subscribe to that theory as such, but mate, I've got 19 and 20 year old kids who I've employed who can't write a sentence, who can't write a sentence. We got, we've had to introduce this NAPLAN bullshit because our standard of schooling was getting so bad. So is there some truth to, and it was more than one person said it, focus on what you're meant to be good at, which is teaching our kids how to read, write and count and leave the business of being parents to the parents. Your child's not listening to this, right? No, God, no. Because my child comes home and I hear that he's belted someone because someone's done something, I sit down with him. We have a problem, right? Because I never told you to belt anyone because I'm not teaching you in, in the future in society to take Madeline's own on the hand, someone piss you off, you go over there and gun them down. That is not what I teach you. You so, know what happened, Thomas? I'm, I'm not saying that. So these are some of the things that I think as parents, we need to take responsibility too, man. If our child now is fully protected and the way that you're speaking, Cameron, it feels to me like you're, you're I, I get it, you're, you're hurt by what that teacher has done, but I don't think that you need to really look at just uh, the teacher. We, what we need to look at is why is why is Isaac making fun of our teachers or, or why is he having a land of the teachers? That, that to me is something that we need to look at because that to me for a young kid who's 10, that is a behavior that is no not to be done around me. It's mate, it's if they don't want to do something, they'll find a way of not doing it. Uh, well, the suggestion to the teachers were they're putting him in a basket and he's in the wrong basket. He should be in the should be in the basket of a troublemaker who needs discipline and to get sorted, not in the basket of a kid who doesn't know how to read, write, and count and that he needs yeah. medication for. I get that. Now, so is it your, your, your point about him whacking somebody is you know He got bashed by two kids yesterday and he did the right thing and went and told the told the school and didn't punch the kids back or do anything. And all he's got is more trouble for it today. Right? I grew up getting beat up most days of the week and it wasn't until I beat him up back that the bashing stopped. Okay. So he has been told by me that if someone strikes you, if someone kicks you, I oh know, I'm, I'm just telling you, we've been... Hey, it's an honest podcast, right? You don't have to agree. That's why the only mean. time he's allowed to raise his hands to someone is if they've done it first. If you get hit, you got to hit back, all right? That's why didn't, he, why didn't he raise his hand and hit those two boys back yesterday? Because he's on the ground in tears because they beat the shit out of him. That's why. You told him to cry if they beat the shit out of him. Hey. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Come on, man. We we, we got getting away from from yeah, the. Well, we're on a different subject. It's, it's well, not the as. Fact, Cam, you saying the kid should have been in a way to discipline, being disciplined, you know, not being told that he's got a problem and so forth. He should be in a room with detention or whatever it may be, you know, um, and not discipline having those... the kid. Don't tell him he needs medication right. for fuck's sake. Do you, do you think that discipline the teachers are allowed to give has been taken away though? That's effective. Yes, I believe it has. They got the planning is, room. He's got he's got planning room, right? So if you you muck up three times and you get but muck up means laugh at the inappropriate time. That's just or, ridiculous. That's a teacher uh, not being able to hold control. No, class. exactly. Seriously. So that's got, just ridiculous. And how, how much experience has this teacher got? He's there. He's in a school that does open concept learning, and what that means is there's, they're in a classroom about the size of a basketball court, and there's actually three or four classes in there together, and they rotate stations. So if you're in there with 
30 or 40 kids and you see someone across the way from you playing silly buggers and you laugh, all of a sudden you get your naughty sticker and three naughty stickers, you get kicked out of the classroom. That's yeah, it's, the discipline, it's ridiculous. Right? Obviously, it's not working for him, you know. That method for and then I not- get a, we get a message going, Isaac laughed in class today and we're like, Fuck off. Okay, what was funny? Tell me what was funny. It, it, <laughs> it was probably a funny joke. The kid's got an amazing right. sense of humor, right? Yeah. I look at your yeah. behavior here now and I'm thinking, yeah, I get it. Oh, you get it. But you shouldn't be. But here's someone some... hits me now, I hit him back, by the way. That's still the rule. Uh, see? That, that's... Don't go on dob. I'll just... Listen, like, even the way you discuss here now, I'm going, whoa, I get it, why he's like that. So maybe you need to teach by the way you are. Monkey see, monkey do, man. Yeah, right? I maybe, maybe you need to do that. My, not by my number one advice, get the kid out of that school and put him in the school after you even in, interviewed. I still remember taking Alexander one day to his school and, and this uh, registrar is taking us around the entire school with my wife and my son and telling us everything about the school. And then he says, you know, we have this and we have that. We have that. I said, uh, Mr. His name was Mr. Hilliard. I said, Mr. Hilliard, listen, this is how I look at my, my kid, right? He's, he's the only boy I have. So I'm not here interested in looking at how my kid will have to just fit a school. I am here to see whether this school has got values that will just fit my way of seeing this kid being brought up. Because if the school, as good as it is, does not have the values that I want to have inside into my kids. My kid's not coming here. <laughs> and he turned around and says, oh, we, I, I like what you just said. Anyway, the, the kid got his position. But I think that what, what I'm trying to say is maybe you should take him out, mm. go to a school, and before you, you get there, interview the teacher. In, I'm sorry, interview the principal. Because I always believe the quality of teaching always come down to the principle, just like everything rots from the head, just like the quality of a leader determines the quality of a team. Yeah. You should sit down and have a look. Then, I think that's what it is. A, a, a lot of parents, they so quick at blaming the system and blaming the teachers and blaming the whole lot, but they never do, they never did what we call due diligence. They never went to the school and sat down and go, Mr. Principal, here's my five questions. Give me your top five values in this school. We went yeah. to eight schools, mate. Eight. Then you, you need yeah. to go to the ninth one because it looks like this. <laughs> she still missed the role. Can we, can we get back on topic, which is not cancelling Cam? There was nothing written on Facebook about does Cam need cancelling. None, no. None of it. Right? I try to make the point that, listen, it's okay to blame teachers, but right. maybe Parents need to start being responsible to There's not one part of me that doesn't blame myself for most of it, right? And that's the... That's no, but no, but the podcast didn't, didn't get it because right now the podcast is thinking the teachers, the teachers, the school. The, no, I, uh, that's all I'm trying to make. The all message right? I wrote to you was I've let me boy down by letting him get into that situation, right? I wrote that to you, Thomas. There's yeah, not one part you. of this that doesn't take responsibility for the majority of it because you have to. We'll next week, right? Why don't you just go next week and interview another school and get the right one for him? Because that'll be his third school in four years, mate, and that's not good for him either. How great is that? Maybe he's going to have three sets of friends. <laughs> I went to nine schools in like. Yeah, look how we turned out. I went to six, Lou. Look how we turned out. Fuck me, dead. We're both sitting on the same podcast. Anything wrong with either of us, just so you know. Cam, can I ask you, growing up, did you have one? teacher that made a positive impact in your life slight or large impact or the only so we were talking before we got on air about writing descriptions in real estate and how bad some people are at it right Pammy Campbell's English class in year eight I come second in the young Australian writer of the year because of Pammy Campbell's English class, but that, you know, I, I was a creative at the time, but so the short answer is probably no, but the long answer is a little bit on some level, but there was no, no 
mental. You, there was no, you there was remembered no, her you know. name. You remembered her name and you remember. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. So if anyone made an impact, I'll still go back to Pammy Campbell's English class, right? She mm. was because if you had said yes, I would have said shit that those teachers have passed the boundary of just teaching you maths. Mm. No, but that was an education thing. She she no, embraced what I'm she getting embraced, at is then. What I'm that's what at I mean. This. She embraced my footy. English. She didn't embrace you played footy any... as well, right? You played yes. footy as well, high level footy. Yes. And I'm sure as shit, you had coaches that were a positive impact that taught you how to play football. Oh, you're picking a really, football. you're picking the wrong guy, mate. I don't get along with anybody. But no, but you, you've had people that have a, had a positive impact in your life. Yes, but more so right. later in life, mate. I, we, we don't need to go down. What I'm getting parts. at is what I'm getting at is this: it, it it takes a village to raise a child, whether they're a teacher, uh, a, uh, a a a, a neighbour, a, a sports coach. It takes a village to raise a child, mate. The unfortunate thing is, you, 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 Isaac's met the village idiot, obviously, but um, it's. It's not it's not a black and white answer, unfortunately. This teacher should be giving parental advice. I, I don't I disagree with that at all. Life. I don't disagree with any of that at all. And if should they have, have done what they've done in Isaac's instance? Absolutely no, no, not. That's... They should be drawn over hot coals and be in front of the bloody education board. There's no question to it. Forget but... Isaac, though, right? Forget Isaac for a second. What about who, who, all the kids that have come before and all the kids that come after? Here's my problem. Well, we said, we said before, look, we said before, it's up to the, a lot of times it's up to the parents about, Thomas did the exp, um, explanation about Charlotte. Oh, Einstein's mum was told that he was an idiot, that he had learning difficulties and he should be taken out of school. And she said, do not ever say that to my son. And she went to the, Einstein said, you are an amazing young man and you're very good at school. And he was one of the world's smartest guys ever, right? Mm -hmm. So it shows, it comes down to being the parents' input. A lot of the parents' input. Again, it's the village that raises the child. Yeah. And it What's also, the teacher's role then? What? It's also, it also is, comes back to something that Thomas mentioned before as well. And I'm not saying that you've done anything wrong, Cam, but I think it's your reaction to what has happened can also shape Isaac's. <laughs> when you uh, leave with that, you are. Pardon? What's that, Cam? I said by leading with, I don't think you've done anything wrong. If you're suggesting that we have. Yeah. No, no, no. It's no, okay. No. I forgive you. Look, as a parent, you know, your instinct is to, no one will do that to my kid and bullshit and that's not going to happen and I'm going to get down there and belt those kids myself. But I'll give you an idea. Well, an incident that happened, a couple, quick ones. So my son, Jerem, he's in year nine now. Um, He's in not the greatest English class because he does struggle there and he has support staff and all the rest of it. But they put a D next to his name in the in the roll call and and he goes to a private school and all the rest of it, good school, whatever. But one day he asked the teacher, why do I have a D there? And with the, the teacher just blatantly said, oh, that's because you've got a disability. And he came home and he said, mum, I didn't know I had a disability. I said, mate, you don't have a disability. Who told you that? And he said, my teacher did because I have a D next to my name. I said, well, that's wrong. So don't you even think that for one second? I said, you don't have a disability. I said, you're, you're as good as every other student in that, in that school. Do you do your best? Do you try your hardest? You, blah, blah. you know, long story short, he said, no, mum, I don't have a disability. I said, well, don't you believe that for one second? It probably doesn't even mean that. And we don't even know what it will mean. But the other, the other, um, uh incident was he had a religion teacher because he goes to a catholic school um and he, he he did play up in this class one day and he did something wrong and i can't remember the specifics of it but the teacher emailed me give me his thoughts and i spoke to jaron when he got home and i said listen it's not just you at school that day mate i said it's that teacher at school that day i said what can you tell me about that teacher his life, his experiences and what he's going through at the moment. I said, maybe he just had a bad day. Maybe you guys didn't connect for whatever reason, but it's a two-way street. You've got to, if you want him to respect you, you've got to respect him, okay? And you've got to, you know, take on board what he's teaching you and you have the right to question it if you don't believe in it or whatever. But you, you don't, just because you've, you know, you can't just make an assumption that this teacher is a bad teacher um, because you don't connect with him for some, on some level. You've got to look at the bigger picture, you know. So I think it's about getting the kids to understand that, you know, you've got to, it's not just about them, it's about the teacher as well. I haven't told, Isaac, apart from 
the couple of discussions about going and seeing a counsellor and a doctor, he's not part of any discussion with the teacher where I've I've given him no he know he needs to respect authority and he knows it. Absolutely, right? yeah. But there's no yeah, thing, because, but, because we, we we need to stay on the, on the thing. You guys have watched Dead Poet Society. Nope. What? Dead Poet yeah. Society. Great movie. With Robin Williams, who plays the role of a teacher, John, uh, John Keating. And as a teacher, he, he not only taught English, but he really gave these kids a, a love for life, you know? So uh, because three of us have, have watched that, would we want our kid to be taught by John Keating? Yep. You would? I would. What about you, Louis? Yeah. Sounds like a great guy. But he is, he is a guy who did not just stick to teaching. Mm. He did end up being fired because one of the kids in his class committed suicide, right? And, and because he was taught about being free and going against what his parents wanted him to be. That was just follow, get, stay on the rail because you're going to become a great doctor. We've got all the connection for you to do that. So he is, this is what I, I, I am really questioning. Do I want a, a teacher who is a robot and not share his feelings with him? I understand. Do not, you can share your political view, but you don't have to impose. You, you can share your, your opinion, but you don't have to impose. You, if, you, if, if you're a great teacher, you have to be able to go liberal, labor, independent, and allow the kid to play. Mm. Because the kids, they come home and they have research on this. And, and then they sit down with us and they go, so what is labor? Well, we have to discuss with them. So, uh, so which part of the teacher do we want that is inspiring, teaching us virtues in life, uh, giving us the, 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 the hunger for knowledge? And, and which part of it do we just want them to restrict to is the curriculum? Yeah curriculum don't get out when the child comes to the teacher and say hey teacher i've got this issue with the playing with this person or playing with that person and 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 from what my parents says you know this person's got those kind of virtues and i should be and uh, and the teacher goes listen mate beside the curriculum do not come to me all right i'm 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 stuck to the curriculum i am not here to do anything else but just teach your parents are the people you need to ask what do we do I think, Thomas, if that was happening the way you described it so eloquently, they, we wouldn't be having this podcast discussion. Mm. The fact is that that's not happening. The t- kids aren't getting inspired. And I've got more than one child, right? And I've got more than one uninspired child, okay? That if that was happening the way it happened in the Dead Poet Society, and I'm sure it does happen in some instances. I've got a very good friend who's, who's a teacher, and I, I love the way he goes about his work. Uh, and the kids, I've seen him with the kids and I've seen the stuff. He goes a little bit off script because of certain disagreements with the, the curriculum and, and I love that stuff. And he's, he's my age and he doesn't actually have any kids himself. But that is such a minority that you can't get a response like we got if what you are discussing, mate, was the majority of people's experiences. Right. Mm. But, when I answers on Facebook, 80% of people are saying to teachers, just shut the F up. Yeah. And that's, but they wouldn't be saying that if their kids were coming back in spite. Right? They wouldn't. That is correct. So, there's people who have taken... There's people, the problem. Should we teach the teachers on how to fill out forms and respect the laws? And, no. Or should we teach them the art and qualify teacher to such a level that we only... Pick the teachers who understand that teaching is a calling, like nursing is a calling, not just a job. And that you, the number one skill you have to have is the skill of reading the child that you have so that you can inspire the child accordingly. How is the it teachers any, are going is, on strike next week, mate. How is it any different, guys? Are you going to be there and pick up the banner for them? Because... Said, said teachers are going on strike next week. They had five months where they got the parents to teach the kids. They've had a month where they've had to do it themselves and they're like, fuck that, we're going on strike. Really, it's really <laughs> no. Like when you think about it like this, just listening to what you're saying, it being a teacher is really no different to what we do as agents. And we're all agents, but we're not just agents because somehow along the line we become borderline counsellors and, you know, a, a, 
uh, a support person and everything along the way. And when we're hiring people, we're not hiring people who want to stick to the book and the script and are in it for the money. No, it's exactly we're right. People based on can they connect? Do they understand? Do they have empathy? Do they have care? Do they? Are they in it for the people? You know what I mean? And so I think, yeah, Thomas, we maybe need, that's what Matt need to happen with teachers because if people are in it for the money, because yeah, they're earning great money. If they're earning more in the first year as more than a, a first year lawyer, well, Jesus. But that's, Lou, we're not, it's it's more than, that's what we do as agent. All four of us here are employers now, right? Exactly. And we, and you, you use the example before that they spend eight hours at school, eight hours at home and eight hours of sleep. Yep. That's exactly what our staff are. Now, if a staff member is playing up, we can't just send them off to get fucking medicated because we can't deal with it. Right? We're not even allowed to talk to them about right? getting medicated. We can't even, we have to adapt and overcome. We can't just tick policy boxes and say, oh, we've done our bit, so whatever comes back, comes back. That's I not agree with you. the point. But there's another side of the argument because I've just been scrolling through some comments, which I believe is just moronic. Okay. <laughs> Someone says, why not? We teach everything else in schools. When society gets it wrong, teachers have to teach and show the right way it needs to be done. As if teachers aren't part of society, you fucking moron. They are human beings just like us. They are part of the culture and the society that caused the problem to begin with. They don't have superpowers because they did a teaching degree. That is the whole point of the argument. But the bloody te- and more than one person has said teachers are the ones that are going to right our wrongs. They're part of the wrong. We're all human beings. Have you even answered that to me, I get it, why he, he got spoken to, all right? Because instead of that, why don't we just listen to what this guy then just said and think, all right, what he's saying is, he can see what society is doing and, and he's trying to remedy it. But the teachers aren't part of society, so they can fix it. No, he's not. He's he not. He's not, but being part when of society gets it wrong, the teachers have to fix it. And he's not the only one that said it. We give him one of those tickets because after three, we should remove him from the podcast. There's another one that says <laughs> holding a teacher responsible for a child's behavior is like holding a parent responsible for teaching their children lessons set out in the curriculum. Haven't we been doing that for two years? No, you haven't, because all I know is that most parents complain the shit out of having to do the, the job of the teacher. Most yeah. parents I've spoken to... Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to go on strike. I couldn't, could I? I was overworked and underpaid. I couldn't, could I? Let's talk about, let's talk about the strike. They, they, they're having a strike next week because they wanted a they didn't get a, a pay rise in, in a little while. And I think they did going for 2.5%. It's a shame that no teachers want to, to listen to this. I told the, uh, the, the kids, uh, just get your teachers online because if they want to talk to me and they want to have the opinion, we, we can crucify them online. <laughs> not true, I didn't say that. <laughs> anyway, but so, so they're going to go on strike because they didn't get their numbers. And I have said this for many, many years already. Real estate works very simple. You get a base salary if you if you're lucky, and then the the harder you work, the more you get. Teachers should have the same thing. The you get your base pay, and if you're a great teacher, like the, there's the, there's some great teachers around the world. I, I you know sometimes I talk to teachers. I go, I'm so inspired. I want to learn what they do it, but how they do it, right? So, and and if they are, you can see it because if they are great teachers, the, the scoring of their kids compared to the norm in the state would be higher. Give them a greater commission. Just in, in that way, great teachers are going to earn so much more than the norm. And lousy teachers, well, they should be lucky they just they still fail. They've, they've done something like that, but it's not to the individual, right? The whole idea in Appleham was that if your school wasn't performing, you'd lose funding from the government. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then what happens is they start, kids are having lots of days off around NAPLAN time because they only want the high performers to be doing the NAPLAN tests and, and all that bullshit that goes on because it's tied to funding from the government. Whereas in, it should be tied to individual performance, right? There's a, there's a school that uh, I interviewed for my, uh, my twins before we put them into this school. 
and we could see it. They they were probably in the top three of the states for girls, right? And and, and almost every year in the top ten. And and after I went to the interview, I obviously I, I'm in sales, so I know how to direct the conversation with my kids. But even the twins could see, hold on, that here they're just a factory. They just want us to be there to get the scoring so that they can get their funding. And 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 the kids, they 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 said, we, we want a school that is all about all round learning. It's all about more than just being great at maths. Mm. Yeah. And because because the, 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 the thing about maths is not getting to the solution, is how you got to the solution. I've seen some of these schools, elite, elite school, I call it, where you have kids, they, they score great stuff at school. But if you really look behind the scene, the parents, instead of going to work, they're taking sickies and they're sitting down with the kids and doing research to help the kids there. And that's wrong. What you need to do is to equip the child with the ability to do the research, not the research for them. Mm. Absolutely. So how do you because how do you avoid the system being corrupted, though, Thomas? Because, like we just said, on a mass level, with the government funding, it comes down to the schools. But on an individual level, you're just going to get teachers not wanting. You're going to get all the kids sent off for ADD treatment that aren't performing. Right? That's that's what's going to happen. They're going to go, I only want the five people who listen to what I say and the other 15 that don't want to listen, I can't have them because that's going to affect my commission. That's yeah. I'm looking at your thing very differently. The teacher who's told you about... No, no, I'm going, I'm, I'm talking, take Isaac out of it. You ask, a, you ask a question. The teacher who's told your child about ADHD is actually trying to help your child be an elite child, okay? What, what I'm trying to say is, well, I think they should pay the medical bills in. What, what, what I'm trying to say is that there's nothing worse than sending your child to an elite school and they've been pigeonholed. Now, you're not in strong maths and you're not going to do in, in top English because we know how to be scoring our school as a mm -hmm. top school. We need yeah. these top kids. I think that's disgusting. That, mm -hmm. to me, is criminal, right? As criminal as telling a child or yeah. a new this this is situ condition uh, to me to send a child to this kind of school which has normally it's around they surround your child with out, outside school tutoring and helping and online tutoring and all. and and your child's been pigeonholed there mm -hmm. that is wrong yeah that's I'm called robbery I tried to get into Gosford Selective, mate, and to do that, you got to do an entrance exam, and I finished it two hours and 30 minutes before the next person finished, and I didn't win any points for speed, and safe to say now I'm in real estate. But And you're, and you're probably richer than the, the guy. I guarantee you the kids that went. <laughs> but what, no, my question was, and it wasn't, I only said the ADD thing because it related to the conversation we are having before. What is the system? You're proposing that, like us, we should get paid for our performance, but it's very we can't corrupt that system. If you do a bad job, yeah, you don't get the gig, right? Exactly. But in a school situation, there will be teachers who will just find a way of getting rid of all the, the to manipulate it. Manipulate. It's, it, mate, that, when they asked us for that report, oh, are we going to get the report from the doctor? No, nah, it's none of your fucking business. Teach my kid, right? Because as soon as they got that report, he's. It's going one way or the other, right? So what is the system? What is the system? And look, I mentioned one of my friends before is quite good at his job. I've also know a lot of people who uh, tried a lot of different occupations and when they lowered the entry level low enough to get into teaching, a lot of them just went back to school to do their teaching degree because that was a guaranteed job for them, right? So, and that's not it. And these are guys that, and girls that I'd partied with and, and I wouldn't want my kid being taught by them. And if any of them are listening, peace out. We had a good time. Well done. Good on you. But um, at one stage they did lower, they kept lowering the entry requirements for teachers because I have trouble getting them. They've rectified yeah. that now and they've raised the bar again. But what is the, what is the answer? Is it not grading the kids like they do in Sweden? Is hey, it hey, hey, listen, you're going to have to always understand each country's got different stuff, okay? So you, you, you can't just go into Sweden and say, all right, this is no, what I'm I... asking you, mate. What's the answer? You because, got all the answers. 
because in Sweden, uh, they, they don't have things such as private school or public school. No one pays and everyone's the same. But then your debt duty is very different too because it's very much equalized. And, and so you, you have all of these things that's happening. You have to really think, you know, the, a system only has $10. And if they are spending the, the like two do, two dollars out of the ten in the schooling, making sure every kid's got the same thing, it, it has to come back from somewhere, right? In, in Australia, what they what we've done is that we create a schooling system where some kids pay ten cents and other kids pay ten bucks, and 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 the, the out of the, the ten bucks, the parents have to pay for nine dollars ninety. I get it, yeah, mm -hmm. I get all of that stuff, but that's how they allow. But then what in doing this, what they created is almost an Indian caste in the learning situation where so some of the parents who can afford it start to get their kids up in the upper caste and the other ones, they become the untouchable. I get it. I'm not saying that the public school is. Right? I never said that. So but by doing that, it's we already starting to pigeonhole our kids in certain categories that are going to destine them in a direction. Mm. Well, it's the start of the. We talked last week a little bit about the two class society, right? That's that's yeah. where it starts. Yeah. Well, here's my advice for you, Mr. Cameron Wilson. We don't need more advice for me. We're off me. <laughs> get, your child, get your child maybe into one of those school where you pay a little bit more because they probably will give him a little bit more. Because that, I think that's what that's what Australia is about. Mm. Well, you look at the Australian system, it is not the Belgian system. I come from the, the Belgian system. There was no private schooling, all right? You had school that were, you had school that were classified, as you could see it, but, that, they, they, but everyone had the right to study. So what, what we did with um, Jack, my oldest, and, and Isaac was we, they, they live in different parts of the Central Coast now. We interviewed at lots and lots of schools. So it, classic example. So the eldest, the 14-year-old, when he was living with his mother in, Tar in Taramara, went to West Pimble Public, which obviously government-funded school, but most will have been going to a private school because it's in West Pimble, right? The 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 um, demographic of people that were attending the school and, and whatever else. When he moved up to the Central Coast, um. The first school he went to was Tookley Public School, which has the highest uh, percentage of low socioeconomic kids in New South Wales, in New South Wales. And he got robbed on his second day, held up at Knife Point and um, had his shit stolen. So we got him into a private school up in the northern end of the Central Coast. On the southern end of the Central Coast, which is Gossip, we interviewed at eight different schools. And what I found was, because we interviewed at, north and south the southern end of the central coast there was very there was no difference apart from the cost of a school bag between the curriculum the attitude of the teachers or the learning potential between the catholic schools the private schools and the public schools there was just very little difference on the northern end of the central coast lou and like i grew up in one you're, you're from goro yep. um there was a huge difference between the public schooling and the private schooling if if I had got for one second an inkling that Isaac was going to be better off with us spending $5,000 a, a year at one of these schools, we would have done it in a heartbeat at the time would not have been able to afford it whatsoever, but would have done it. But there just was no, there was no difference. There's no discernible difference in any of it. And, and the private schools around us are all Catholic, right? So that's all, or central coast grammar, which, You've got to be the elite of the elite, and Thomas, you don't pay me enough to get a kid into there at the moment. So, listen, mate, um, you've never been that rich since you've been around me. So, it's I know, but I still don't earn enough to go to Central Coast Grammar. No, <laughs> hey, what, what you in? Ben? You've allowed me, mate, since I've met you, I can fuel up the car every week instead of once a month, mate. So, thank you. <laughs> You're going to be a millionaire this year, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, fucking oath, I am, mate. Fucking oath. But, yeah, what I, my point was, my point. My, my, my point was, if I could do, if we could do better, we would try and do better as far as a level of education, right? Short of sending him down to Sydney and, and doing all that stuff. All the kids, it's all the kids. 
There's a grammar school around you. And I and I know some people are gonna say, and actually a lot of people didn't want to come onto a 14 year old hacked the school computer and opened up all the kids, all the teachers' files. He's that smart, right? No learning difficulty. He's that bright that he managed to hack the school computer and open up all the kids' files. And instead of punishing him, they brought him in and said, How did you do that? We need to know how you did that. So it can't happen again, right? That's the that's the private school that my eldest son goes to, right? My my neck middle son farts in class and he's got a learning difficulty, and um, my six year old tells the teacher what to do. So fucking, God help us all. Do you know what, Cam? I think I don't know how much of an impact do you guys think school had on you? All I wished in all I wished for, and this is what I and mine may be going down the wrong path. I'm sure Thomas will tell me I will. All I wish for is when I was at school, someone would tell me once you leave school, none of it matters. Because when you're at school, you think it's a be-all and end-all. You're made to think that it's a be-all and end-all. Yeah. And if you fuck school up, you fuck life up. And all I know is that all the people who used to beat the shit out of me and all the people who were A grades and all that shit, they're all lying in gutters now where I own three real yeah. estate businesses and I'm killing it in life. And all yeah. I want my kids to know, all I wanted Isaac to know today when I picked him up is regardless of how shit your day's been today, son, it isn't gonna it, it, it doesn't matter because the real world's out there waiting for you. And do you know what, Cam, the other and the reason why I asked that as well is because the only thing that I wish that I had is actually people around me at the time that made me because I, I actually enjoy study and I really enjoy learning. And I wish I had people around me that pushed me harder, but I didn't. And a lot of people don't realize, but I didn't even finish year nine. I left school a third of the way year through through year nine. Like I don't have a high school certificate of any form, but I did have from the moment that I left school. And as we know, we, well, I left school, whatever, but I had great people around me and the great people around me pushed me into um, valuing education and learning and the right thing versus the wrong thing. And I think what shaped me more in life is the people that I had around me and their examples. Yeah. That my, my parents, my mum listens occasionally and I, if she's here and if they sent me to the best schools they could and I bluff them, that's why I can see it in Isaac, right? Because in year 10, they're like, listen, maybe school's not for you. You should go and get a yeah. trade. I but knew as, I, wanted, I, I knew I wanted to be a footy player. So I told them, as oh, you don't did, worry, I'll do my best for my HSC. It was never going to happen. I just didn't want to get a job. Right? But as so, you said, the people that went to the elite schools, a lot of them aren't even doing elite things now. They're in the gutters or whatever it is, you know, and I, and I can relate to that because I've got a lot of people that I know that I dropped out and they all told me I was an idiot and I probably was at the time. But what shaped me is the examples that I've had around me and the people that I surrounded myself with to get me through, um, you know, and one thing my parents did do is always said to me, um, you know, if you've done the best, you've done the best you can. And if you, you know, you've got to know right from wrong and whatever else. But I think what's going to be more important, and I know we keep going back to Isaac, but what's going to be more important in this instance is not what the teachers do from here. It's what you do from here. No, I understand that. I know that. Right. And as I said, all I wished for at school was someone to say to me, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, you're going to be okay. And it doesn't right? matter. And it also, don't let anybody... I don't see I was about to fall off his chair because he's paying a million dollars a year for something that doesn't matter, no, right? So. But, but all you wish was for someone to tell you doesn't matter. And what it also, what Isaac needs to understand is it doesn't matter what anybody tells you. It's it's your, it's your the belief in himself and, and your example that's going to shape him. Yeah. You know? I'm a full generation of teachers. Yes, true. Yeah myself as a teacher even though I, we, I run the franchise and run the office i i i really love the teaching of leadership to i'm his add child to mm -hmm. be, no 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 mate, you're the rescue animal that i'm trying to really <laughs> <laughs> it's really different i'm not far in your classes all the time no no you're failing a lot of my my, my subject that's for sure but <laughs> i would have to say that as a so i have an I've been teaching people for 20 years now in sales. Mm. Every, every second month, I take a group of people and I within three days, I have to just see the best in them. Mm. And you know, I still, I'm still in love with just doing that bit because 
I think that that's part of the calling. It's where you, you're, you're not there just to teach. You're there to see something that this flower is going to be before this flower even open. Yeah. Open. And so, and I think that that's what teachers should be. But when I look at this, this subject, I think that what the, the answer is, is, is a very complicated answer. And, and we can't just sit here and blame the teachers. And we, when we, we give them nothing, I think we need to really understand and accept that a child, Chris said it takes a village, but a child is about the teachers and the parents dancing together. Absolutely. Right? There's no blame. You have to understand when what if your child's gone from six thing to sixteen during COVID, something's happened that you have done to increase that. If you take that responsibility, then it is possible for the child to go from sixteen back down to zero. Mm. If you keep on going, it's your fault. It's your fault, and you and you fucking is. No, no, no. I think that let me finish. Then I think then the child will go from sixteen to thirty-two because. When a child sees that he gets love and attention from his parents by behaving bad, he'll do more. And that's, I think, the problem. Parenting is difficult. Here's the thing that I want to ask you guys. Hopefully the, the girls are not really listening to this. But the girls are now in a period where with the two years of COVID restriction, there's no tennis training together. There's nothing to be done. And training together between the two of them, and they've been brilliant up until now. They've gone to a level now where they said, Dad, we hate tennis. Mm. We, we don't even want to do this anymore, right? We, we want to do something else. What do you do as a parent? Mm. There's good money in women's rugby league now, mate. Okay, so that's your advice. What about you, Chris? If oh, I would go back to find why they love tennis the first time. Um, Nothing that they like about tennis. The first time, what they did. And and hopefully you could reignite that spark. And, I'd send them to a paediatrician, mate. I think they need medication. They clearly, um, yeah. they clearly okay. got ADD. Okay. What about you, Louise? Um, I think I would, like, similar to what Chris said, you know, I would sort of, find out what what we'll find out what um <laughs> drew them to tennis in the first place and you know was tennis something that they wanted to do or was it something that you know maybe you well, wanted to do then, I, then here i'm going to cop it because i said to them you're still on the court mm. all right i don't care about the way you think right now you're still on the court when you winning the next competition, you can decide when to quit. But right now, you are not showing me the virtues of someone who's doing the best. It is easy to sit down and, oh, I don't this and, and that, and I don't, I don't like it anymore. No, no. You win first, then you quit. So we, we, we made a pact. They did not like it, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm right behind them, and I'm doing it. Why? Because as a parent, I'm going... I get it. They they they're very advanced the daughters, and the girls are, are so advanced that they 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 now into social media. They, their dogs got two thousand followers, and they got this, and they got a life outside, and and they got their hormones now probably like started already. But as a parent, I'm not here to be their friends. I'm here to be the best guy that could be because the, Khalil Gibran says in his book The Prophet, the children are not your children. They come through you. They're not from you. And, and, and you are here, but you also have to understand that you are the bow and they are the living bow, the living, what is it? Um, arrow. 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 And, the, and, and when he says in, his, in, in, in that poem, the stronger the bow, the further the arrow will go. Mm. You, I, I, I know they hate me. For the moment, in the last two weeks, every time I just say it, I can see the state drop. And, and it's it's taking a lot of out of me to really see how I'm going to juggle all that. But I found out that the only way to get into this is dictatorship. Where I said to them, the day that you pay for the damn mortgage in this house, you make a decision. Right now, right, we've done all of this stuff. You do this, you win, then you deserve the right to quit. Because I know when you win... Nobody moves, 
right? But and, and as a parent, so what did I do? I have already now called other coaches in order to get them there and, and help them love that again. I also have analyzed why they didn't love it. And the reason that they lost a little bit of that love is I was too much behind them. Me who doesn't play tennis telling them, what are you doing? And you're not reading the book and you're not getting the, the in a, that in a that in the game of tennis that I bought you, you didn't read. And and I realize it. I'm 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 the one who's who's stuffing up their love of the sport. So where do you go? And and so as a parent, we are not here to be their best friend. Whoever says that uh, as a parent, I'm their best friend, you're full of shit. They're gonna have a best friend. You are here to be their father, the, the guide. The, the person that should really enable the, your child to do whatever the, your child can do long after you left this world mm. or before. There's going to be, from what I understand, I'm hitting that stage now with my eldest, but between the year, between the age of 13 or 14 and 18, you couldn't tell me shit. And if you, the harder you tried, the more I would rebel right? yeah yeah i get your job is to help them not miss an opportunity but given everything we've been through and given the lockdowns and given how hard they're working at it before we talk about sometimes with our staff to you we talk about let's not break the machine is there room for a spell in there mate and that because i think in that you don't, sense, be the, you don't want to be the, you don't want them writing a song about you, right? Because a lot of the songs about parents and kids aren't, aren't the mm. good ones. And they, they don't hate tennis, mate. It's just been a shit of a fucking time and they're turning 14 and they're women. So God help them all. Right? Yeah, uh, no, honestly, honestly, God sure, help them all. I agree with you. I agree with you. And I, I can't, I can't, here's where, Teachers need to go. I can't give parent advice because I'm not happy with what the job I do as a fucking parent, right? So, and I haven't been there before. You got two kids that are older to you, so you've had the, the twenty year olds now who or mid twenties who to learn from. But you crash test dummies. It's... Yeah, but I'd, listening to your talk, if I was a fourteen, like just then, if I was a fourteen year old male, let alone female, I'd be telling you to fuck right off, son. Oh, you got to pick your battles, though. You got to pick your battles. No, right no. off. Not only that, Chris. Not only that, Chris. You have to also understand this. You can't just speak about when they're fourteen. I had fourteen years of putting virtues and bad. Yeah, and they haven't. They haven't. Made, so, by by you, saying you can't just take a kid in here. Like there, are, there are people who give me their children, and I can't do much. But I'm gonna have to say this, and Cam. Uh, th this is a reality. I was being nice to you then, mate. Be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac had a huge difficulty with being a, 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 uh, uh, containing his anger, right? Yes. And, and you and I couldn't believe what he's done. And I lost a bet against him, right, where he, I, he said to me, right, Thomas, for a bet of 180 something dollars, he, he would just contain his anger for the six months, and he did. But it, it was bar one time when he had a little bit of a slip, but that, that's okay. No, everyone's going well, to do There's no, what so they, I'm talking about is your 14 year olds who are going through their own shit mm. and have come to you and been brave enough to say, I don't want to do it anymore, dad, even if they don't really believe it. And even if there are other shits going on, sometimes you got to let people stew in their own, mm. uh, their own, well, I don't, I can't think of the word I'm looking for, but, to work through their stuff, their, their shit is Work through it a little head. bit and then they'll but, come back to you. If, if it was rammed down their throat, I I don't I don't see it. I don't see it. But. That's why we are all different, but I think that we, we need to really remember teachers are not the, the only person to blame. Teachers are, are, are there to really tangle with the parents when it comes to that. Any the, teacher that can do the worm, I'll work with. But until then, I can't dance with you because I can do the worm. Can yeah. you? I, I see this, you know, at the beginning of this uh, this thing here, we, we, I had uh, Louis saying to me, so 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 blah, blah, blah. And I said, listen, I can't, I'm not going to be on the fence. I think that there are great teachers, 
All right. And they're for, a shit teacher. For a child, and they are bad one, but for a child, they are great teachers and they are lousy parents. Mm -hmm. So thank God the kid has got the great teacher. And then they are great teacher and I'm sorry, they are lousy teacher with mm -hmm. great parents. In that respect, the poor kids got the wrong teacher. So mm -hmm. But what if we got to a level where we have great teachers and great parents? How great is this kid going to fly? So I think this, this is the thing. We, 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 it's not about like judging and, and, and saying teachers should not or teachers should. I think it's about parents. It's time that parents and teachers really start to dance together. And I know that Dominic Perotet says, oh, teachers are well rewarded enough. No, Dominic. So far, since you've become a, a, a premier here, all that you've done is Mr. Yes Man, all right? You've always said yes to everything here. Why? Because you, I, I get it. The, the election is this Saturday and, 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 uh, for, for the, for the uh, suburbs and, and, and for the region, and your, your election's coming up. But I think that someone with conviction must stand up and recognize, is our kids doing well for the moment? If not, how do I fix a problem? Okay. Mm. And, and saying that the, the teachers are well uh, uh, rewarded. I, I don't believe they are. I think that teachers who are really looking after the most important things in our life should be highly paid. Mm. I think the teachers that are really looking after the most important things in our life won't be at that strike, mate. They, and, that's, and that's the thing. I don't think, I the, think teachers the, that, I don't think the good teachers will be agreeing with, we want more money. You know, they Maybe we want more help for the kids. And oh, stuff they might that. be. They might be agreeing with we want more money because who doesn't? But they won't be losing the kids more fucking education after what we've just been through. If mm. well, I'm serious. What is education, education on the seventh of December, mate? There's no more education. It's a it's a last week of school. Well, there's no more contracts of sale either if you're on the central coast. So get your contracts in early, people. Yeah, there's no elections on the Central Coast because the council's in administration. There's no one to vote for. So I'm free this Saturday. Anybody who wants my <laughs> parenting advice. But I think, I think going back to what we're all talking about here and back to the podcast and should teachers be giving parenting advice, which I don't know that we've completely covered the parenting advice topic. I think we've spoken about teachers a lot. But I think... I think what Chris said, it takes a village to raise a child and we're all responsible equally. And I think the biggest responsibility that we have is to take on board what the, what the teachers are saying when they come to us, but it's how we react to that, you know, because in that moment of, like, for example, when I think back to how I sat Jerem down when he got in trouble from the religion teacher and, I could have said, well, that guy's a dickhead and don't listen to him and who cares about religion anyway because we're not Catholic. But it wasn't. It was, mate, you've got to understand that everybody has days and sometimes people have good days and bad days and maybe there was something happening in his life. I think what, and I'm only talking for myself and my own example, but what I did in that moment was recognise that, make Jeremy understand that you did the wrong thing because it warranted the teacher to email me. He admitted he did the wrong thing, but my response was not, he's a fuckwit. My response was, maybe he was having a bad day and you must respect him. And what it showed him in that moment was that I have his back. Yeah. But he also, but he also must respect his teacher. Absolutely. And, and if there's an issue, we'll work on it together as a unit. But I'm not going to throw stones and nor is that teacher going to say or, or, or decide that you're you're a bad student either because I don't agree with, you know, and, and I think when you have that open line of communication then you can have a good balance and you can have a, a good result at the end. Um, it's really like, and, I, and I, I would hate to be a teacher today. I would really hate to be a teacher today. I think with the, as you said, Cam, the two years of shit that we've gone through, like we, we've homeschooled our kids for the last 18 months, two years, whatever it is, you guys probably longer than me because we weren't as affected as you, but it's a hard bloody job. I did it for two weeks and thought to myself, there is no way I could be a teacher. Yeah, but we're like, not trained to do it, right? No, I know. We're not trained to do it, but we, we had to step up. And, we're and not. We did. But, but, the, but the thing is, like, it's hard. It's hard. And it's hard to be a bloody parent. And, Every job is hard. Absolutely. I agree. It's hard to be a parent. It's hard to be a teacher. It's hard to live in this world as it is anyway, just with everything going on, 
you know, it's just about finding the balance and keeping the lines of communication open. But understanding, I think that's the biggest thing. We've got to understand not just it's communication. I don't know. I, I can't put a I can't put a finger on no, it. No, you're saying it. You're saying it exactly right. But and and here's the thing: there are kids that go to school who don't have any parents or figures at home because they're drug addicts, alcoholics. They they're getting abused themselves. Yep. And and in some cases, the teachers are the parental figure. Okay. Yep. But in all cases, if you're going to be that figure and, and if you know that that's your role for eight hours a day, fucking be careful how you do it. Exactly. And I right. agree. 100%. Do it like a parent would do it because no parent would tell a kid they're an idiot or no parent would tell exactly. a kid they've got a medical condition and they need no real parent. Exactly. Right. Need, right. So... Yes, there needs to be understanding on both sides and I've reacted to something that's happened, but I go, how many kids has this happened to? Right? Yeah. And how many teachers are acting this way because they don't sit back and go, fuck, I've got a huge responsibility here. Huge yeah. responsibility. You know, the biggest responsibility we have, Cam, is raising children who don't need rescuing from their childhood. And that's the biggest responsibility we have because a lot of people... A lot of parents raise children the wrong way. And then when they become adults, they need to be rescued from that childhood because they're stuck in those ways. And that's the biggest responsibility we have. As do teachers, you know, they spend more time with our kids than probably we do, in all honesty. Um, not for the last two years. Yeah, no, not for the last two years. But, like, forget about the last two years. Like, think about our own lives. You know, like, teachers... I spent more time with my teachers than I did my parents. I know that for a fact. And there was good ones and there was bad ones and there was ones that made a difference and there was ones that I thought, well, I didn't really agree with them or like them, but there was ones that made really huge differences in my life. And, you know, I think, but it wasn't just them. It was the people around me and it was the people and the influences and what I surrounded myself with. And my parents weren't the best. Like, my parents weren't the greatest. I moved out of home when I was 15 years old. I haven't lived in a home with my parents since I was 15, which is more than half my life. But it's life, you know, and who I ended up with around me and surrounding me, you guys. I've spent more time with you guys than I have my own family or parents because I've known you all for that long. But it's that that shapes me. And, and you know, so I think... I can't, we can't throw all the blame at teachers. We got to understand that they're humans as well. And it's a bloody tough shit life out there at the moment. <laughs> nah, fuck them. Real estate agents are the way to go. Well, I, I, I think sometimes egos get in the way on both sides where the teachers feel they need to know the answers and the parents feel that the teachers should know and don't tell me. I think it's a give and take scenario. You help me, I'll help you. As we said before, all kids are different. Everyone's an individual, right? Who knows their kids better than the parents? So why aren't the teachers reaching out to the parents to say, you know, I can't get through to your son. What can we do? Yeah. I had that when I was growing up. My, my mum had difficulty when I was younger in, in primary school. And all she said to the teacher was, you don't, want him being, you don't want him to be a disruption to the class. Keep him busy. Make sure he's got something to do and he will just keep doing it. So the teacher did, and guess what? Stop being a disruption to the class. Mm. And on the flip side, if a parent doesn't know how to help their children at school, maybe go and ask the person who's been taught to. Mm. And it's a, you know what, guys? And we have these egos that we put up going, I'm the parent, I should know. I'm the teacher, I should know. And we start going on like this, when we should be helping each other. It takes mm -hmm. a community to raise that child. It takes a, a conducive, a helpful community to raise that child. Mm. And I know when I was a kid, when mum gave that feedback to the school, I remember an improvement in myself. Mm. But it wasn't until the teacher said to mum, I, I, I can't stop him disrupting the class. Mum goes, keep him busy. It worked. Yep. Why aren't we having stronger communication with each other? Why aren't the teachers and the parents having that stronger um, communication? Yeah. I mean, Lou, you, you, you did it you made perfectly with Jerem. I mean, saying that, you know what, look from his perspective. Don't go off with him. Just take another view of it. Mm. I mean, it doesn't get much better. There are shit teachers and like they're shit parents. There's no question. Yeah. No question. None, no four of us fit into any of those categories. Mm -mm. But I think if anyone, anyone is having difficulties with their kids, 
have an adult conversation with your teachers and teachers have an adult conversation with your parents and ask to help each other to help that child. Well, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's just a relationship and no relationship can function or work without open communication and trust and understanding, I suppose, and, and, and knowing the whole situation and, and each other and the, and the differences that, like, you know, Cam, like um, Isaac, I don't understand. We went down the open communication route, mate. And to Chris's point, we when we thought we were struggling, we went to the teachers and yeah. And unfortunately, we went then, to a couple. But, we went unfortunately we went to a couple of morons, right? So and then um, that's it, Kim. And then it's not your fault, mate. If you've gone that and yeah. you've gone that open open arm policy, <laughs> you don't have to give him that. There are parents who go to teachers to hear what they want to hear. If they can't hear what they want to hear, they go, stuff you, I'm going somewhere else. No, I think that parents need to read at least seven books about parenting because they, then they will uncover a lot of things that they didn't know. I've got three kids. I've read three of them. No, 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 you haven't. So I, 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 understand, I understand you have not read one. So I, I think that that's what parents need to do before they, they point the fingers because this is where it pisses me off listening to some of this stuff happening, and it's not just the three of us, it's out there I've been asking. Do you know how I know when someone should really give me information about parenting? I look at their kids. Mm, yeah. The kids I want to have, I go, like, your parenting shit ass. Yeah. I look at the, 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 the parents whose kids are, are crazy. I go, that's... I, I still remember when Charlotte was born, I, I went to Bob Breeze, a friend of mine, and he had a uh, he had a, a very young girl, and I said to him, "Romy, what is it that you've done with Romy? Because I want my kids to be like her." And he said to me, "You know what, Thomas? He is a only advice I give you." And I still remember that's twenty eight years ago. He said, do, 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 do "You see the top you have at home? Yeah, just untighten it as they grow to deserve it." That's it. And, and just from that advice, that's what I've done in life. I do not treat my kid as my friend. I do not have debate of a 40-year-old with a four-year-old kid. I do not get involved in all that. I just understand one thing. Release, the, give your children the ability to control their own life as they deserve it. Because he said to me, it's easy to untighten, so hard to tighten them back up. Mm. So you need to use, and, 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 and this is what I understood. They're not here to be, you're not here to be their friends. You're here to be their guide. And if friendship happens to be there, it's a great bonus, but it's not the number one rule because what, what happens with your friends? When they do the wrong thing, you go, oh, yeah, it's okay, mate. And when, when they want their thing and, and you know it's not right, all oh, right, okay, I respect. No, you're here to be the person who is the bow of which the living arrow will fly off. That's all. Mm -hmm. I don't want your kids, mate, or your parenting style because they don't want to play tennis and it's going to make me no money when I'm older. So <laughs> find me some so find me some parents who kids want to play tennis to and golf. make me make me a millionaire when they're older and I'm good. Mm -hmm. Go to golf. I know we've gone over the, 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 the time that we uh, we should have, but I think that was a great subject. Thanks very much, Ken, for the subject for the week. Oh, and, I feel great about it. And this show, is, shows, this, this show is not about who who's made and who's not made. This show is about the four of us have got our own set of values. Yeah. The four of us have got this, our own ways of believing certain things, and and we do certain things for the best, right? So the, the podcast that we put out is not about taking sides and who's right or who's wrong. It's about how we believe in our, our own values values in our own beliefs and live our lives accordingly just occasionally you might hear a good idea from the other side so thanks very much for today guys talk soon thanks guys bye